Ben, your first Ashes test as captain, how much are you looking forward to it? Uh, yeah, I mean, like, I mean, the Ashes is a huge occasion for you know, Australian and, and English cricketers. Um, I wouldn't say I'm looking forward to it as much as my first ever official captain captaincy um, in a test match, but I'm extremely excited, you know, I've, I'm glad I've actually managed to, you know, captain 12 games before stepping into the Ashes as captain, you know. Um, so, you know, I've got a lot of things to, to be able to, to look back on under pressure or, you know, different situations within games. But, I mean, Ashes is always something that every English cricketer, Australian cricketer really looks forward to. And now obviously being captain, there's uh, something else on top as well. Is it though, with, with all the other cricket, we're here at the IPL, with all the franchise cricket, with the amount of cricket that's been played, do we make too much of it? Or is it still, for certain cricketers, the pinnacle playing in Ashes series? I don't think you could ever make too much of what Ashes cricket is. Um, I think, you know, you hear it from the players, you, and then, you know, even now, well, even in the last summer, the, it was already being spoken about. Um, and the closer and closer you get, the, the media attention that comes from it, the, you know, it's, it's, it's huge. It's the, it's almost, well, it is the, the biggest, um, you know, test series um, when it's being played. For that reason, it makes your job slightly harder because you spent the last year trying to have fun and enjoy and take away that fear of failure. How do you shut out the noise and the importantness of an a Ashes series? Oh, we'll, we'll keep doing the same things that, that we've done. I said there's no point changing what we've done over the last year f just because we're now coming into an Ashes series. And, um, and everyone knows, every player knows that the Ashes is where you know, everything just ramps up a little bit from, from pressure to exposure to all this kind of stuff. But you know, we'll just keep sticking to what we do. And, and me and Baz have been around enough, our senior players have been around enough to, to understand that and make sure that those little things don't creep into the dressing room. Do you plan for any negative downturn or is that completely blank from your mind? Because everything really, 10 wins, two losses, has been hugely positive. Do you have to plan for if things go in the other direction? No, if, if it's another one of those shaking no, heads. No, it's not, is it? You can. <laughs> uh, you, if you plan for negativity, it's never what's going to happen because, yeah. No, don't plan for stuff like that. And how do you think the team are placed? As a team, if I asked you now how much of your 11... Do you know where would you be at? I mean, I think where we are at the moment in terms of being able to, I could pick a 20-man squad if I really wanted to. Um, and I've, I've already said that, you know, with our bowling group, I've, I've asked the medical team to, to give us the best opportunity to have eight bowlers to select from for every game. Um, and I think this year's Ashes in particular, the games are quite sort of close together over compared to um, other games. So. Being able to have those resources available, you know, every game is something that I'm, I'm really keen to have. Um, in terms of, you know, could pick a 20-man squad because that's how fortunate we are at the moment to be able to pick um, from this group of, of English players who are so good at the moment. Um, but I think I know where, you know, the, the start 11 is going to be there or thereabouts. And if a fit Johnny Bairstow is in decent form, does he? come in and does he come in as a batter, batter keeper? Have you made those decisions yet? I think that's the, the big question. The, the thing for him to concentrate on and everyone else should, should really focus on and talk about is, is making sure that he, well personally, he is fit and giving himself an opportunity to be picked. Um, but he had a horrific injury, what he sustained. Um, you know, for a guy who was at the height of his game at the end of the summer, for that to happen to him was incredibly unfortunate. Um, but yeah, you know, he's got a few more, well, quite a long time before we go and, and hopefully he's using the time to, to get himself fit and, and put his name in the hat. But first and foremost thing is for him to get back out on the field and, and I hope he does that sooner rather than later. How important is getting in the red ball cricket before that Ashes? You're leaving here early to get back. Um, Australia are coming over, to, some of their Australians are coming over to play county cricket. They've got a World Test Championship final as well, so they'll hit the ground running. How important is it your team do that as well? Uh, I think it's just, f it's more the, I think it's more for the body to be honest because it's, you know, no matter what you try and do gym wise or fitness wise, you can never replicate a full day in the field. Um, and that's, that's something that you need to, I guess, get the body ready for and make sure that it's up to scratch. In terms of like, 
playing and stuff like that. Like you see, I don't really play in the warm-up games anymore because I like to use those opportunities that we have for more training-specific kind of stuff. So, um, yeah, I don't necessarily see a, a huge importance to to make sure that you know everyone's got the right amount of game time um, in their bodies. But you know, we'll, we'll have some players who feel like they want to play maybe three or four championship games before the Ashes. We'll have some guys who will like, I'll just play one and then just keep bowling or having nets and stuff like that. So. It's one thing we try and do. We just like put it down to individuals. Say, what do you guys want to make sure that you're ready for the for the start of the summer when it comes to test matches? What did you make of some of the counties letting two or three Australians come over and have a little hit before the Ashes? Uh, yeah, I've got absolutely no issue with it whatsoever. Um, you know, I, I guess it's it's something that always will be picked up on in the media when you, in the Ashes year if Australians coming over. To, to play. Marcus North actually messaged me <laughs> saying, uh, just wanted to make sure that it's all right that we've signed. Uh, and I was like, mate, it's absolutely <laughs> fine. Like, don't worry. Because, um, you know, as well, it's great for, for our game as well that you get these international players coming over and, and wanting to play in, in the county game. Um, you know, why would you not want, you know, superstar international players coming over and representing your country's, you know, first class cricket? It's something that I could not really care less about because um, when it comes to when it comes to the Ashes I, I don't really think it's going to have too much influence or say on their prep before you know Steve Smith could get four ducks in a row but we all know that when it comes to it he could get 700 runs in the Ashes I don't think it has any influence whatsoever. Won't be the first time you're asked this question um, won't be the last how's the body how's the knee where are you I saw you bowling over mm. last night how is the body? Great format to come back into <laughs> bowling again in a T20. God almighty. Um, look, to be honest, it's been, I've said it at the end of Wellington, it's been a very frustrating year. That's how long it's been bowling with this knee problem, just not being able to fulfil my role properly as, as fourth seamer um, has been frustrating. And um, I've worked, you know, so hard over the last month, five weeks, to get to where I am now. And um, being able to bowl pain free. Touch wood has been, um, it's been good. Um, you know, even last night I went for 18 runs, but obviously I managed to bowl and over without any pain in my knee. Um, and that's, you know, obviously down to a lot of hard work that I've done away, f you know, from medically in the gym. And obviously I've had a bit of a help with some cortisone injections, but um, everything's going nicely and just take it step by step and not look to rush myself in too much because you know obviously the main priority for me is, is making sure that I can fulfill my role as full seamer in the Ashes. And so do you have to look after yourself in that Ashes series with the ball? I mean the 15 overs you bowled in Headingley, uh, you know that, that famous victory, that 15 over spell, can you go through that again if you need to put your body on the line or will you just say no Ben look after yourself? No there'll be none of that, I mean <laughs> I've, I've had some good conversations with you know the people who were employed to look after us from a body wise, I said look I said, I'll, I'll be doing everything I can whilst I'm in India to make sure that when we get to the Ashes, I'll give myself the best opportunity to, to do my role. Um, and if it needs to happen, if anything outside of that needs to help me for a little assistance, then please just do what... I'll do whatever I can to get myself through, but medical team, if there's anything you guys can do to help to get me through that, then please do. And the war of words have already started. It's usually Glenn McGrath saying 5-0, 5-0. It's come from your side this time, Ollie Robinson. <laughs> We're going to give him a good hiding. I mean, you won some confident cricketers, I guess. Did you win at all, or are you quite happy with Ollie saying we're going to give him a good hiding? No, and, and going back to before about just sort of letting people free and letting them operate how they want to operate as, as their character, that is Ollie Robinson. He is such a confident individual with not only within himself but also within the people he's got around him at the moment with his team um, you know I, I seen that and I was like that's Robert down to a T that's his character um, you know there's no arrogance about it whatsoever he, he just firmly believes in himself and firmly believes in the team's capability at the moment um, you know I'd rather him be saying that than oh I don't know might get beat like we used to. Um, <laughs> <laughs> the, 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 part the, as well. yeah, they so say the Duke's right. ball is going to do back to its old ways. Does that favour either side, do you think, or not? That, that they say it's going to swing around and stay hard. I mean, obviously, they've got a gun attack, but so have you. Oh, I hope better than the ones we got last year. They were dreadful. Um, oh, look, I don't know. I think 
I think in England it brings the two teams probably closer together. Look, Australia are an incredible team in Australia. They're a very, very hard team to play against. So I'd liken it to India and India, you know. Um, in terms of coming to England, like, it just brings the two attacks. Even though they're different, I think Australia, you know, they've obviously got the likes of, you know, Stark and, and Cummins who, you know, bowl fast. Um, We've got that. Op we've got those two options with you know three options now with Woody, Joffre, and Stoney. But you know we've got three incredibly skillful bowlers with Jimmy, Robbo, and and Brody, and we know what those two are capable of, and they've got a Jeeks ball in their hand. Um, but just see. Don't know. I don't know if it's going to be a bowlers attack v bowlers attack or batters against batters. Got no idea. I think we're both very evenly, evenly matched team. Will you? Want, it's difficult to say months out, but will you want pace in your attack or are you quite happy to go up Robinson, Broad, Anderson? I think having the option to bring, to have someone who can bowl above 90 mile an hour is something that any captain wants, any team wants to be able to do, but um, when it comes to, when it comes to the, that first test match, I'll be making sure that I, I pick the best team for, for that first game, first wicket, you know, we've been very clear with especially the ground staff around England about what, we t what type of wickets we want. And they've been you know, very responsive to us, which has been good. We want fast, flat wickets, which you know, something that we want, because you know, we want to go out there and score quickly and you know, brings their, their guys in. You know, if they've got fast wickets to bowl on, then they'll be happy with that as well. But um, yeah, smiling just because I'm looking forward to it. So. Yeah. Where are you with Joffre at the moment? I think Sussex said that at pre-season media day the other day that he probably won't bowl with a red ball before the Ashes. Are you okay with that? You just said the physical demands. Would you be okay with him going into a, an Ashes test not playing much red ball cricket for a long, long time? So he wouldn't bowl with a red ball? That's the first I've heard of it. <laughs> yeah. so it must be, must be a misquote from someone. So you're going to get him bowling, get him back there bowling? Yeah, the balance between World Cup selection and Ashes selection. You know, Archer, Wood, Martin Butler are going to be keeping their eye on them. You're going to want them for the Ashes. Who gets first choice on these fast bowlers that are like gold dust? Oh, I, I don't know. I don't, I don't think it will come down to like something like that. But, you know, the Ashes is way before the World Cup. So I think we'll be all right in terms of, you know, making sure that we've got those options available for the test team and then also with the, with the white ball team as well. What have you made of the Australian side and how they've gone about things? I mean, they've not won in England since 2001. Where do you see they are with their game at the moment? Oh, I mean, look, they're always... Australia, they're always a seriously competitive team. Um, you know, I think you look at, you know, the likes of, you know... Warner, Labuschagne, Smith, and you know, Travis Head as well. You know, the um, I think Travis Head is, is, is someone who's really has, since he's came into the team, really taken his opportunity and gone. This is how I'm going to play. And I think him being allowed to go out and play the way that he has is why he's been so successful. Like he was so hard to bowl to in Australia when we were there last time because he just threw counter punches and those innings he played against us were really hard to, to bowl to, really hard to set fields to. But we, we're prepared for that and we're also prepared to, to, to go for runs as well, which is something that has been sort of got easier as we played more games, especially for the bowlers. You know, Jimmy and Brody, I think, have been so protective over their you know, economy rate and hate going for runs because they love to tie batters down and work them over in that way, whereas now they've seen a different side to it. So having those two who are so skillful and have taken so many wickets over their career who now have that it's fine to go for runs mentality as well is, is something that I think is, is going to do us fine going forward if Australia do ever come back at us with a bat with any type of counter punches or anything like Travis Head in particular likes to do. With that short period of back-to-back-to-back -to -back -to -back test matches, do you feel you'll have to rotate that bowling attack? Uh, I th yeah, I think it would be silly to say no, because you know test matches are hard; they're grueling on the bodies, um, and who knows what type of conditions that we're going to be up against from game to game. Um, you know, we might feel that 
having high end pace is something that we want throughout the whole series. We might feel that it's not what we need in, in every game. We might need it on two, two games, we might need it on three games. Um, but having those options available is something that, as I said at the start, is something that I really want to be able to, to choose from, is having the, you know, an eight, a group of eight fast bowlers to be able to pick from every game. And your captaincy style? Exactly the same as we've seen in the last 12 test matches. Exactly the same. So say you get to your, your 3-1, no, 2-1 up, let's do me math. You're 2-1 up going to the oval. Will you declare on 480 for eight first innings? Yeah. You would. If would you? Feel it's, yeah. if you uh, and Especially if, if you've only got Jimmy left. God, <laughs> walking with you, isn't he? <laughs> and if on the last day you're 300 ahead, three wickets down, and you're 2-1 up in the ashes, you just need a draw, 0-5, just have a draw, bails off, you walk off, ashes, winners. Are you declaring or are you batting on? No, I declare. No, hold me to it. Like I'm not going to change. I'm not going to change anything just because we're in the Ashes. Like every game that I play this summer in this Ashes game will be to produce a result. I'm not going to change for anything or any situation because I'm not being true to myself there for what I've done over the last year.